Father, I thank you so much that we're able to come today. Lord, I pray for my husband. I pray that as he comes and delivers the word, that you give him a mighty boldness to step in to this message that he has. Lord, every he, ear to hear, every heart to receive, every person to understand the message that he has going forward. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name that I pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Thank you. What? That's my wife. She is the most beautiful woman in the world. And I've been around the world and I've seen. Hallelujah. You know, I'm, I'm probably more excited about being in this service than any of the other services that I've been to here at uh, Zimmerman Shiloh. I, I, I began my ministry, my preaching ministry, in youth ministry. Now, it was, it was just after the turn of the last century, around 1905 or so. But I actually began with... Uh, a, a college and career age group that was 93. We, there were 93 of us. And it grew to nearly 1,600 college students. And we literally shook our city for God. And so if I had a place that I would rather preach, I would rather preach here. And so I had worked all night Last night, I'd worked all afternoon. I had worked on this message for you guys, and then he changed it this morning. Because there's something special he has for you. It's a little bit like what I preached last week to a church of 12. Now, I've preached to 70,000 and 12, and you know the anointing's the same. You give them your best. Amen. They're just getting started. They're in their second month. And I said, man, 12's great. You started with how many? Three. Well, look at that. They've, they, they've grown four times in, in six weeks. So that's impossible growth. That's incredible. So they needed encouragement, and I go wherever the Lord will open the door. Amen? Amen. We love your bishop. He's my friend. He's my brother. He's my age mate, even though I look much younger than he does. I'm just <laughs> This, in five days, is it five? Five days, I turned 67. Can you imagine? I think God got the date wrong with me. I still feel 47, but I, 67. Today, let's quickly get into the word. I want to talk to you about hope. 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 Say it, hope. Without it, you're, you're in real bad shape. You've got to have hope to have faith. Now turn to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Actually, 1 and 2. Now my my dear friend, Brother Felix said, yeah, he's already got it up there. Now let's look at this. It says, now faith is. Does it say that? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, how is it that you can have faith is substance of something you can't even see? We put so much stock in what we see. You know, we're driven by the senses. We live in sense-driven generation. Everything is. I've I've got to see it. Now you can see it real time. I mean, somebody gets killed across the world. You can see it right then. I mean, we're, we're driven by the senses, man. We've got to see it. And sometimes we as Christians fall into the trap of we've got to see it to believe it. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you must believe it to see it. You've got to first see the 
unseen. You've got to see what you cannot see before you can see the impossible happen. Do you understand me? Now, all hope is, is your, your, your dream. Now, how many of you had to have a dream? You, you, you have a, a, a mental picture of what your future looks like. Now, how many of you want that dream to get better? You, you want a better dream. Some of you feel trapped. How many of you feel trapped? Like, I, I, I really, I, I, I've got this dream, but man, to get from here to there, ooh, that's a big jump. And that happens to most young people. We dream these big dreams. Oh, we want this and that as if our dream is limited by us. You're not limited by what you see. You're limited by what you believe. Are you with me this morning? Let's look at uh, verse 8 of chapter 11, Hebrews 11, 8 through 12. Let's talk about a person who needed a little hope. Can you imagine being, well, you, can't, you can't imagine being my age, much less the age of Abraham. Abraham was 100, his wife's 90, and they had a dream. I can imagine how their friends laughed at their dream. Let's see what it says. My faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place where he would receive as an inheritance. He would went out and not knowing where he was going by faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign city, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise for he waited for the city whose foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. She bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky in the multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Think of this now. This couple had been promised a baby. And God, you know, sometimes the longer he waits, it looks like it becomes more difficult. But was it any more difficult the day that he promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a baby? Was it any more difficult for God to wait until he was 100 and she was 90. Did that change? Did that make it harder for God? Now think of it. If you're 90, anybody here 90? <laughs> I may be the oldest person here. Is there anybody older than 67? If you're a woman, you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> but I'm probably the oldest or one of the oldest people here. A lot of services, I'm the oldest. But God is not limited by my age. He's not limited by my resources. He's not limited by my money. He's not limited by my degrees, and I have a bunch of them. Bachelors, masters, two doctorates. I mean, I've got so many degrees, I have a fever. <laughs> but sometimes your big brain can get in the way. We can make it complicated. What God said is simple. Believe. Trust me. Those of you taking a test, let me, look, I, look, I've been a professor. I have taught in university. I can tell you how to, how many of you want to do well on the test? Let me see your hand. Forget about it. If, <laughs> if you have not studied by now, you, it all of the worry, all of the anxiousness that you have between now and the time you put that pencil in your hand is not going to help you at all. Get a good night's sleep. Go for a long walk. Pray. But don't worry. Worry actually hinders your, your brain. 
it actually works against your ability to do well on the test. So just don't worry. Cast your care upon him because he cares for you. And he does care. Now, hope says, this is the language of hope. God can do it. Say, God can do it. Now, hope becomes hope when you say, God can do it for me. Now, some of you have no tr trouble believing that God can do it for your neighbor. But God can do it for you. Whatever the promise is, he can do it. But hope is always tomorrow. It's never today. If it's today, you, it wouldn't be hope anymore. If you could see it, you no longer have to have hope for it. Hope always dwells in the future. But many people have lost hope. They no longer see that it can happen. But they forget God. We have a big God. All this stuff we see going on in the world... He's bigger than all of it. He's bigger than what's happening in Israel. He's gotten Israel through more stuff. If you just read your Old Testament, it, God spent the first 4,000 years getting them out of stuff. He'll get them out of this stuff. I promise you. They're not just fighting against the people. They're fighting against God himself. But he has that same or, 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 or maybe even a greater love for you. He's fighting just as hard for you. He's going to take care of you. I know it seems hard, but he's going to do it. The problem that you have is not God or his ability. It's you, man. It's the way you think. It's the way that you think about yourself. Don't worry about what others say about you. Worry if you're going to be concerned about what you're thinking. Your thoughts are limiting you. They're going to hold you back. When you get to heaven one day, you're not going to be able to say, God, you just let me down. He's going to say to you, why didn't you change your stinking thinking? Think differently. And you would have had a different outcome. Amen. I know you don't like this. You want Pastor Jimmy back now. <laughs> but he would want me to tell you this. I, I just don't. Look, go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. Let's, let's run some scriptures here and see what God says. Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 12. In the second half, it says, having no hope and without God in the world. Can, this is the problem that the world has now. There is no hope. Who, are, who is the world going to trust to straighten this mess out? Now, I'm not a government man. I was asked once to run for Congress, and I said, absolutely not. Why would I take a demotion? to become a politician. Can you imagine? Now, there are people called to do that and I pray for you. But I, I would rather not politic. I'd rather have hope. But our answers are not going to come from the politicians. Your answers were not going to come from the from, from the new president, the old president, the wannabe president. It's not coming from these guys. It's going to come from God himself. When the government is put upon his shoulders, then we might have a shot. But until then, we need to trust something bigger and higher than government. We got to trust God. Our government needs God's help. Amen. Now, I'm a Kenyan. Been here nine years. I think that qualifies me. Even have my own ID card. 
When I go, I, I was on the train the other day, and they said, where's your passport? I said, I have an ID card. It's a Kenyan ID card. God looked at it and said, man, you're a Kenyan. No, nope, you know, no matter how long I stay here, I'll always be an American. But if you came to live in America, you could be an American. It's the funny thing about America. We accept everybody. Have you ever noticed that? Nobody's breaking down the doors to get into Russia. But man, they line up at our border to run across. They want to get into America. Everybody wants to be an American. Amen. I don't know why I told you that, but maybe you want to be American. I want you to go to Romans 8, 24 and 25. Faith is the substance of of the things that you hope for. So without hope, you can't have faith. You have, nothing to put, you have nothing to put your confidence in. And hope is what you see your tomorrow looking like. Now what does it say in Romans chapter 8 and verse 24 and 25? It says, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what man seeth, what doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then, we, then do we with patience wait for it. Now, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to get a picture of what you want your tomorrow to look like. Forget the cost. Forget the the limitations, forget all of that. Just get a good picture in your heart of what you would like. I didn't say, look, some of you girls are picturing a man. Get that, get that out of you. There ain't no man. This is going to do all that for you. <laughs> get a picture of what you want your tomorrow to look like. Now look at me, what's holding it back? The only thing that stands between you and that possibility is what you believe. Now faith is the substance, it's made up of the substance of your hopes. So the things that you are saying are going to happen tomorrow it becomes faith when you can say, not only do I believe that it can happen tomorrow, but I believe that it can happen for me today. When your hope moves out of tomorrow and moves into your today, that's when it becomes faith. When you can act as if you already own it, then it belongs to you. Let me give you an example. There is was this store in America. I hope I still have that same card. All right, I don't know what this card is. But... Isn't she beautiful? Stop me. I even got my police badge. See, I got that. I got everything in here. Now, I was a policeman at one time. In this store in America, it was called Standard Merchandise. I mean service merchandise. And what you would do is you would go into this big room, and you could buy nothing off the floor. You, it was just a showroom. And you would go and look at things. And you would say, all right, I, lo I want that, and I want this, and this. And you'd write down on a little piece of paper the stock number for what you wanted. Okay? So let's say you wanted this plant. 
Is this living? I can't tell if that's, that might be living, but let's say you wanted that plant, you wanted that chair, you wanted that pulpit, you wanted, you wanted this oil, you, and you write all these things down. And then what you would do is you would go to the, to the checkout counter and you would pay. You pay for the plant, you pay for the, the, the oil, you pay for all this stuff. And then you go wait by a window, kind of like over where Felix is. And you go stand at the window and you stand there. And what they've done is they've given you a receipt. And this receipt says, I own it. But you don't yet possess it. Are you with me now? You own it. You've paid for it. But you don't have it yet. That's faith. Faith is when Someone's bought you something, they give you a receipt, but you just have not received it yet. And that's how you walk by faith. Your hope is, I could have that. That can belong to me. But I'm limited because I don't have any money. So if, if I'm the only way I can get that plant or I can get that oil or that pulpit or or, 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 or a girlfriend or whatever, and I have to have money, I'm not going to ever have one because I have no money. But what if... Where's my wallet? What if... Let's pretend. What if... I gave you my credit card? Now, some of you women are like, whoa, ho, ho, ho. now we're talking. <laughs> That's the kind of man I want. I just want a man that'll say, here, baby, take my credit card. <laughs> now, the fact of the matter is she lends me hers, but um, so... But if I gave you my credit card, would that increase your confidence? Would it really? I mean, if, if I said, you just, whatever you want. You said, what's the limit? Unlimited. Whatever you want. You're limited by what you can believe or what you, what you want. All right. And so now you, you have more confidence to pray for big things because it's no longer just based on you and your limitations. If there is a promise, write this down. If there is a promise for what I want, in the Bible, you can write fast. You should be a secretary. No, Bible, B-I-B-L-E, not <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, we're having a little technical difficulty. B-I-B-B-B-B-L-E. No, it's just one, one B. There's, you know, you know how, she's like, B-B-B-Bible. <laughs> so, if you, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, let's see if somebody else can spell better. Maybe you're typing better over here. Let's see. See, if, if you can find a promise, in, not of the Bible, in the Bible, in, in, go back up, back up, hit backwards, in the Bible, then it's yours. You see, the promise... He says, find a promise for what you want and pray that promise back to me. And it's the same as if you're using my card. The promise is the card. Or the card is the promise. So that when you need something and you can't afford it and you'll never be able to afford it and you know you'll never be able to afford it and you still need it, you go to the Bible and say, is there a promise that covers that? And if there is a promise that covers that, then you begin to pray back to him that 
promise and it's as if he gives you the credit card. He says to you, that belongs to you now. All you need to do is wait patiently for it and you go stand by the window and it will come to you. Let me give you a good one. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you have received it and ye shall have it. Matthew chapter 7 tells you all the things you don't worry about. Don't worry about food, water, no clothing, stuff. Don't worry about it. God already knows you need it. Just ask him. He knows you need these things before you ask. But he's giving you his card. <laughs> his card is his promise. And when you pray his promise, the only thing left to do is wait at the window. Now you're walking to the window and your friend sees you and you say, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to the window to get my promise. Oh, you're never going to get that. You've been praying for that for years. Never going to happen. Oh, yeah. I have promises that tell me it's going to happen. Now, the only way it'll not happen is if I don't go to that window and wait. If I give up on God, then that promise will never come to me. So move out of my way. Doubt, unbelief, fear. Get out of my way. I believe in the integrity of the one who promised it to me. His name is better than your name. And when he said, you'll have it, he means I'll have it. Therefore, I will wait with confidence. I'm going to preach this. I'll, I'll preach another. Listen, you didn't want the sermon I was going to give you anyway. This is the one you need. And you might even say to your bishop, Let, can we have Dr. Ron back a, one more time? Because there's a little more to this. Now you know why we had so many young people come to church. And I can tell you, having followed many of them over these many, many years, that they got what they believed for. Sometimes it did. Listen, when you ask for big stuff, usually big stuff doesn't come through the little window. Little stuff comes through the little window. Big stuff sometimes takes time. But it comes the same way. You're waiting for a spouse? Huh, big window stuff. Come on. Don't you go to no little quick window. We're, this is not the express checkout. You don't want to find, oh, I just met him. Oh, oh dear Jesus, you just met him. <laughs> you, you, you may have just met trouble. But he looks so good. Yeah, but so does the devil. Comes as the angel of light. This, this boy's got some things to prove to me and my mother <laughs> and my father and a bunch of uncles and my brothers. I mean, if he can get through all of them, might be a chance. But don't, don't want big stuff just quickly. In fact, when big stuff comes too quickly, you need to check it out. Check it. I'm not saying you can't find something that you want quickly. But stuff that is of value takes time. Now, Rhonda, do you have all those diamonds I bought you? Now, you, do, you, do you wear them all at once? Oh, oh you can't. You, you know there's too many. Now, but this diamond, man, maybe I need to take some of these back and go to get you some bigger ones. I mean, come on. I mean, just think, but do you, sorry. 
we're, ha we're having a private moment. <laughs> Do you know how long diamonds take to bake? Now, they can make one in a vending machine now. I mean, you can go to get you a, a 3D printer and print you a diamond, but it ain't the same one that's on that finger. She didn't get the... It's, it's almost the same. She got the real deal. And when you're waiting for the real deal, there can be time involved. But that's called faith with patience obtain the promise. Faith with patience obtain the promise. Quit being in such a hurry for such big stuff. Let God be God. He knows exactly what you need. And if, if <laughs> they, say, I mean, they, 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 should, they probably still get it. They, they, I'm sure they get it. No, no, they, maybe they're not. Look, if you haven't received it yet, it's probably not ready. Now, in addition to being the most beautiful woman in the world, she is one of the best cooks in the world. The woman can cook. Oh. She, the woman can cook. Ah, put your gun away. She was also a police woman. And she, she and I used to go and shoot at the range and see who could shoot better. I always won, but that was you know, there, there. But the woman can cook. Now, she will tell you there's certain things that you cannot hurry up. Now, we like that, that micro thing. And we like to get the pizza and throw it in the micro and bing, three minutes later, you get cardboard with tomato sauce on it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's the truth. It's, it's, you convince yourself that's a pizza. But when that woman makes a pizza, it takes time. You see, anything of value takes time. Quit being in such a hurry for things just take a little time. And when people ask you, well, how come you haven't gotten married yet? Because mine's still being worked on. Ooh. Mine's, mine's still in the oven. Ooh, buddy. I'll wait. You go ahead and hurry along. You, you, you'll regret that hurry along, you know. But you go ahead and hurry. I'll, I'll, I'll wait for God's best. Do you see what I'm saying? And if it's not going to be God's best, it'd be better to be alone than to with, with, with somebody else's problem. Now, who's whistling at who over there? Is that a reminder to somebody like, ooh, ooh, I, ooh. Are you with me now? If you want it, you can have it. He's paid for it. Anything, look, I've got, I was going to bring it, but there are too many of you. I, 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 I have 60 promises for young adults. It's the 60 best promises in the Bible for young adults to believe God for. It, I mean, it covers from everything. But some of those promises take a little time. And what Satan does is he takes delay and he turns it into denial. Write that down. You need that too. Denial. D-E-N. I-L. Denial. Delay is not denial. It's just delay. Are you with me? Sweetie, put. Thank you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Delay is not denial, it's delay. Don't let people redefine that term for you. And you're, on, you're not on their schedule, you're on your own. Plenty of time. You say, I'm, if I don't, hey, I had this one lady came to me and she said, if I don't have a baby, I'll never be able to have a baby. I said, look at Sarah. 
The woman was 90. She said, oh, no, don't tell me I got to wait till 90. I didn't say that. I said, look at Sarah. She was 90, but she waited patiently. Could you imagine her at the, at, at the, at the quick mat? And all her friends are there watching her shop, and she's buying diapers. And they're looking, that woman's crazy. Look, look at that, Sarah. She's still 90. She thinks that she's going to have that baby. And they, she was the laughing stock. And she would go buy diapers just to pinch them, to remind them, my God's the one that promised me, not your God. My husband, not your husband. Maybe he ain't touching you no more, but my husband, he, he's, he and I are just, we're with it now. Now quit that. Well, you, your mind goes right there. What, what, what is it? I'm just telling you. It's, it takes one to get the other, brother. I just, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just telling you. You see why I can't preach this on a regular service? They would be lynching me right now. It'd be over. They'd say, Bishop, never again have that man back in our church. But when you're at the youth service, you can take a view. Is this being recorded? Hi, 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 hi Bishop. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? Everybody likes to criticize you for waiting. But it says, wait patiently and you obtain the promise. We're, we're not at the, we're not, we're not microwaving, we're not microwaving these things. Now, everybody in Kenya wants to be called a doctor. I've met more doctor preachers that have never been to school. And do you know what it takes to really get DR before your name? Years. Are you with me now? Doctor. What school did you go to? Uh, it, it was given to me. Yeah, and I, that's called worthless. That's called a copy. No, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, I'm not saying this wrong. Look, there, there are people that have honorary doctorates that, that that have earned those because of their many years of service. And if they, they're not going to learn anything new anyway. You know, Bishop Mark Kariuki is a friend. And I'm going to tell you something. He's one of the most brilliant men in the world. And for him to stop now and go work on his PhD would be insane. He can teach the PhD course. But when you got a, a, a 40 year old guy that, that, that hasn't even finished his bachelor's degree and now he's called doctor. No, if you, if you want that, study for it. It takes time, but when you get the real thing, it's worth it. Are you with me now? I, I, was, <laughs> I was on a train. Was it a train, Boney? Was I on a train with a guy that called himself Apostle? Huh? Oh, it was a bolt. I was riding in a bolt. I was riding in a bolt. And this guy, you know, he, he doesn't know who he's sitting with. You know, I probably am an apostle, but I just, I'm, I just, I'll just be Dr. Ron. You know what I'm saying? Titles are, I'm just, I'll let God, let, let God decide that way. Anyway, we were talking, he says, I, he says, I, I'm an apostle. I said, what are the signs of an apostle? He goes, huh? I said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are the signs of an apostle? <laughs> he says, I don't know. I said, you're probably not one. I said, miracles are the signs of an apostle. Are you with me now? Now, I said, do you want to be an apostle? He said, yes. I said, then I, you, you need to go get under somebody that has a miracle ministry. Okay, don't be so quick to get titles. You can accumulate all these titles and they can mean nothing. But I'd rather have the I'd rather have the signs of the apostle and not the name apostle. I'd rather have the power than the name. 
You know, I'd rather have the education that I have. Listen, I went to school at post high school 12 years. Now, anybody does that, you need to go back and they need to get their head examined. I didn't. I should have. But at 60 said, I've decided I'm not going to get another doctorate. I could, but I probably won't. Two's enough. But you see, we're, we, want, we want to get things so fast. We want stuff just given to us. And we don't want to earn it. Or we don't want to wait for it. I'm telling you, the things that God wants for you, the good stuff, that stuff that when you closed your eyes and you saw that beautiful future. Do it again. Close your eyes. Take another look at that, that beautiful future. Look at all that's in there. Some of you, some of you women are looking at the beautiful babies and you got this and that. And you, some of you, are, how many of you see a beautiful house? Well, a, there's, a, there's a big difference between a beautiful house and one made of tin. One made of tin, you can get up in about four hours. But a beautiful house sometimes takes months, could take years to build. See, big dreams are worth waiting for in faith. Are you with me? Now turn to your neighbor and say, my dreams are better than your dreams. Just go ahead and tell them. <laughs> Just tell them. You already believe it, so you might as well tell them. Let's see. It says uh, 1350. Is it counting down? Where, pa Pastor, I need your help here. Is that counting up or down? So when it gets to zero, that's when you, <laughs> you take me out of here. No, as you see what she does. At the 15 minute mark, this, this woman, bink. And then it'll start flashing, bink, bink, bink. Until soon she's walking in front of me. You, <laughs> just kidding. That's from years of being a pastor. <laughs> I just, you know, and if you always go long, you can just claim it was revival. <laughs> oh, we were in revival, Bishop. He says, yeah, you're going to be in revival in, in, the, in my service, and I'll get somebody else to run that service. All right. Where were we? You don't even remember. <laughs> All right. Uh, Romans 8, 24. It said, For without, but hope that is seen is not hope. All right. So hope is always made up of imagination. I, I need to get to this part. You, you don't want me to stop now. Because we're just there. 2 Corinthians 4.18. Are you enjoying this? Yes. Can I come back? Yes. Well, you have to convince the bishop on that one. And the pastor might give a bad report. Oh, that man went crazy in that service. <laughs> Talking about 90-year-olds having babies, bishop. You wouldn't believe it. It was just really... Whoo. 2 Corinthians 4.18, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is what? Unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is, e is eternal. Now, I love to use my board. It reminds me of the classroom. Can everybody see this? Well, they didn't, nobody wanted to put it in the middle or I'd have had it there, but we don't have time. Now watch this. This is, the, the camera will get it. Are you guys going to, you're going to help me out? Praise God. You guys have the armor bearer ministry. Do you, or just put it up here. Can, but just put it, no, down here is fine. No, over here is fine. No, just over here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where you want to put it? That's good. What's that? Do I hear Jesus? What is that? It's the angels are coming. Well, is that a church down there? Oh, okay. I thought, I thought man, it's time for the rapture, Lord. We're, we're going straight up.
All right. This is your heart. This is your broken heart. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just, I, that, that's a mistake. Just, hey, look, just, just say it's age. Don't worry about it. Now, you, you have a head and you have an eyeball and your heart has a eye as well. Did you know that? You didn't. Well, I'm glad that you asked about it because I'm really going to tell you. Now, look what it says. Go, go to a... Uh, 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 Second Corinthians 5-7. How are we doing over here? <laughs> uh, I, I'm just looking. Second Corinthians it says, For we walk by Faith. and not by. Faith. But now it's been telling you what to look at. And now it's telling you not to look at. So how can that be? answers how can you walk by faith and not by sight and then it tells you to hope is seeing what you can't see so which is it it, it depends on the eye you're using okay if you got more than one eye I'm not talking here and here I'm talking you have an eye here uh, you have a mind of the uh, you have a you have your, your, your uh, what do you call it? Come on, you know. Uh, you have your mind, your will, and your emotions, your soul. Your mind, your, so your mind, will, and emotions. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't, I'm sorry. So many things to do when you're preaching. But your, your mind, this is your mind. This is your mind. Well, maybe your mind. It's a messed up mind, but your mind connects to this realm, this, this 3D realm that we live in. It connects, it has a, an earth suit. Stand up. This man is wearing, you can too, you, you have one too. Both of these men have earth suits. Okay? Now, if they went into space, this earth suit is not going to help them in space. Because it's not suited for the environment. Mm -hmm. In other words, this earth suit, handsome young man, probably waiting for that wet lady that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's baking in the oven there. Now, this, this suit is perfectly suited for this environment. It, you can, it has senses or sensors. And... What are your senses? What, 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 what are your senses? You have what? what name your senses. You have five of them. That's just yeah, a hand. Hearing, tasting, smelling. smelling. And seeing. Okay. Seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, and uh, touch. Touch. Yeah, touch. Hearing. hearing. Least, uh, tasting. tasting. Seeing. seeing. And sight. Wait. Smell. Smell. Sorry. Sorry. He, he really knows. It's okay. <laughs> But do you agree that that helps you contact this world? Yes. All right. Sit down. Thank you. If you go to, if you go to space, you get a space suit. That suit won't work. You've got to put on one that helps you to contact that environment. But you also have to contact, this is the 3D world, but there is the fourth dimension. I'd like to come back and teach on this sometime, on how to how to maneuver in the fourth dimension. But we do live in a spiritual world. And that spiritual world needs to be, you need to have a suit or you need to have sensors to contact the fourth dimension. Not one amen, not even an oh me, nothing. <laughs> but it's true, say amen. Amen. And God has given you what is called the mind of the spirit. Now, let's keep going. And I wrote all this standing in the back out there. Can you believe it? All right.
Romans 8, uh, 24. All right, let, let, let me go back. I've got to go back to something else. Um, let's see. We got uh, five, four, three. No, excuse me. Um, I, Mark 4, 24. Just write down and check it out when you get it home. It says, take heed or be careful what you hear. Okay? Because... Words can turn into pictures, okay? What you listen to, sounds, music, create images. Uh, Luke 8, 18 says, take heed how you hear. So what you hear and how you hear are important. I don't have time to get into it. Now, I just want to clear something up. You think in pictures. If I say elephant, you do not spell it in your head. You think elephant by seeing an elephant, right? If, if I say most beautiful woman in the world, you think Rhonda. It's just, I mean, it's automatic. So you think in pictures. How does your spirit think? If your mind, that thing that interprets all five of the senses, all five senses go into the brain and they are put through the computer and out you interpret that, that you get data points that tell you what all that means. But how does your spirit think? Now, how does it think? Write this down. I've got to check my dear lady down here to make sure she gets this right. <laughs> if I want to know, if I want to know how my spirit thinks, I'll have to come here, Dr. Ron, preach the next message. Because <laughs> he's not covering it today. <laughs> We're done for today. But this you need. And I don't know when you can work it out with Bishop. We, we need to finish this because most of the processing that most people do in this earth is done by a brain that is not equipped to contact the spirit world. And because of that, because they're trying to use their brain to understand spiritual things, they misread what is going on and can be deceived. And one of the biggest problems in the body of Christ, people do not know how to interpret spiritual things. They treat them like they're natural things. And they're not natural things. But if you can learn how to interpret the spiritual, then you, huh? Oh, I'm, they, they can hear me. Look, I've preached to 40,000 without a microphone. I'm so sorry. I'm used to preaching to the Maasai, and we don't have microphones out there. Are, are you hearing me? So th th there is another step here, and I really had hoped to get to it today. I'm not trying to just tease you, but I am a little bit. But th we, we've got to... As college and young adults, you've got to learn how to master, not just become acquainted with, kind of like a test ride. You know, you can test ride a Mercedes, but test riding one and owning one is two different things. Are you with me now? We want you to know how to fully function in the realm of the spirit. I will, after this, after we do this someday, I hope soon, 
I'm going to pray with, if, with each one of you if, if we have to for spiritual breakthrough. But I want you until, until you get all your connections, slow down a little. Before you make any big decisions, seek out spiritual counsel. You know, if Rhonda and I are around, just, you can come up and ask me anything. I'm, you know, I'm here. If I'm not here, go see your pastors. Go see your cell leader. Talk to somebody before you make some massive decision, and all you're using is your brain. Now, you can have, look, I've got a very high IQ, but it, it's not qualified in the realm of the spirit. They actually use different language. I'll give you a hint. Where you think in pictures, in the spirit, it thinks the word of God. No pictures. It's not like you, a little boy. Elephant. No, he wants you to move beyond that. But his language is that Bible. It's a little, little insight there. Spiritual pictures come from what that Bible read to you creates in you. So we've got some things to pray about and talk about in the future. Bow your heads real quick. Father, I thank you for every young adult here. What I see in this room is incredible potential. I really do. I do, I do sense a little impatience. We, 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 we want what our parents took 30 and 40 years to get together. We want it now. It doesn't work that way usually. And usually if it comes too quickly, you can't handle it. So Lord, I pray for this group that they would have spiritual patience. There are women here that if, if, if a guy were to just ask the right question, they'd say yes. It doesn't matter who it is. Because they put what they want ahead of what God wants. So I pray that the, those women would say, you know, Lord, not my will, but yours in my life. And if I have to wait, I'll wait, and I'll wait patiently, because to have your best is better than having my best. There are men here that are being prepared for a great future, but before you get married, men, you be, learn how to be a, 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 a good brother before you have to learn how to be a good father. Learn how to take care of what belongs to somebody else before you ask God to give you a lot of that for yourself. Lord, there's character development going on in this room. There's, there's a lot of good things happening because, God, you're preparing them for a great future. Now, if you've come here today and you don't know Christ and you may have been raised in church, but you know today that if Jesus were to ask you why you should get to heaven, you wouldn't have the right answer. And you want to be sure that you're going to make it to heaven. I want you to stand up for a prayer. All over here. If you're not sure that if you died today, you'd make it to heaven, just stand up. Stand up. Stand up. 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 You say, if I stand up, they'll think something. They already think something of you. Everybody thinks something of everybody. But there's people here. I sense somebody's here. You're not confident. I don't care how, if you're raised in the church or not. But you're, you know you're not ready to go to the other side. So stand up and let's say a quick prayer. Get this out of the way so you can be ready. Anybody want to join me for this prayer? Everybody look at me. How many of you know somebody that's not saved? Somebody at work or somewhere, a neighborhood, somewhere that's not saved. You bring them next week. Find a way to get them here. Offer to buy them lunch, whatever. We've got to get the lost here. 
Now, there are a few here right now that think they're found, but they're lost because their life does not match the requirements to make it to heaven. You have to confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the, de the dead. For with the mouth, confession is made unto what? What does your mouth confess to? What does your heart believe to? Righteousness and salvation. Now stand up for this blessing and then we're done. Pastor, come. come up here. Lift your hand to heaven, receive a blessing. Now, Lord, we've prayed about a lot of things today in this service. Prayers have been going up since before I got here. I pray that you'd listen to every prayer and answer them. But in this service, there have been questions and concerns and issues that have come up. Just lift, in, as you lift your hand, lift those concerns that you have up to God. Lord, we just, we give to you our future. We, we give to you the opportunity to adjust the future to make it look like you want it to look, not just the way we want it to look. And we're willing and ready to wait for the best. And we trust you with that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come and put your hands together, celebrate Jesus.